Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I'm talking about Cities of Sigmar and why the book for me has become kind of a big disappointment. Now, I came into Cities of Sigmar with a lot of excitement. I thought it was going to be fantastic. I was really excited about the options. I thought it was a really cool design. Um, and I came in with an existing free guild army, um, which was actually more of a legacy empire army all the way back from 8th edition. So I had a full complement of stuff from Ironweld Arsenal and uh, Collegiate Arcane as well. So it was, um, you know, I felt like I had a good collection going into it. And, you know, when all of those kits got culled just before the release of the book, um, and, you know, all of the War Scrolls that got left out of it, Free Guild came out pretty okay, and I felt pretty good about that. And I thought at first, you know, this looks good, this feels good. And then I started actually playing with it and building lists with it. And I started running into this problem where I couldn't really put together the lists that I wanted to. Like, it just wasn't functioning the way that I would hope. And what ends up happening is as time goes on, I start seeing what tournament lists look like that are doing well. And there's a bunch of common threads and one of the most common things is that they're very cosmopolitan lists. They're bringing in some high elves, some dark elves, some wood elves, some Caradron overlords, some stormcast eternals, some collegiate arcane, you know, little bits from here and there and everywhere to bring together um, a, a cohesive force that functions well. And that suddenly became a bit of a struggle for me because I realized what I had wasn't really that functional of an army. It was really just narrowly one faction within the army and that was not the best in breed stuff. Most of Free Guild, in fact, is not the best in breed things. There's a lot of problems. And um, most of your other options throughout the book that are similar are better choices. But even in those other factions, you don't consistently have good choices inside of one faction. And with that also... Although Free Guild got a really decent treatment, and I think uh, Darkling Covens came out pretty well as well. They didn't get a ton of things discontinued, but if you were playing High Elves, Wood Elves, or Dwarves, you really got the shaft pretty hard. Like, you don't have a lot of units left. The units that are left uh, for Dwarves are good, um, and... If you were playing High Elves before, uh, you really you just kept Phoenix Guard, but good thing they are probably the best unit in the book. And if you were playing Wood Elves, well, it's kind of tough for you because all all of the stuff is bad. Like it, there I haven't really seen any lists running Wood Elf stuff other than maybe Eternal Guard. So it's really this big frustration for me that it kind of felt like we went into this book with the promise of it being um, the battle tome for these five legacy armies. And what it has sort of turned out to be is this big catch-all book that you have to grab bits and pieces from everywhere for to make it work well. And it's not really like it's the thing that kind of the theme that keeps popping up with games workshop and age of sigmar where you keep getting this promise that like oh you get to play with your toys you 
we're going to keep the stuff around. You can still do what you want. You can still play what you want. Um, but if you look at competitive match play, like there's just no way for a lot of things. I, like, um, I don't see a legacy free guild army, legacy empire army in Cities of Sigmar ever doing more than like 3-2 at a tournament. And that's really rough. Like, you can have some good matchups and do well at, like, one-day events. And I have. And at bigger tournaments, like, you just run into these threats that you can't deal with. Um, so it's been a huge disappointment. And I started a little bit of buying into more of the book and I bought a big lot of dwarves and I realized what the hell am I doing like this is like this isn't my army number one and number two this is um it, it's becoming very expensive it's not the way I want to play it and I sure as hell don't want to paint all this infantry because most of the ways to play this army is very heavy on horde infantry. So if I want to go play the army more competitively, I, I've got to pick up a ton more quantity of models, let alone um, paint them all and get them all based the same way, uh, which is at this point a challenge because the army is old and I've got to figure out paint recipes to keep the base color the same because I ran out of the paint that I was using. Um, so it's, um, it's really a challenge. And even when I went to go paint another free guild general on Griffin, I was like, what am I doing with this? Um, I didn't see really a place for it in the army. So overall, I've been just having this disappointment with the Cities of Sigmar book. And that's, I think, probably felt by a lot of people that went in with a legacy army where you have, um, you know, you had existing dwarves, you had existing wood elves or high elves, or free guild and you got this book and it, it feels like your army isn't there anymore so what i'm really trying to get across is not that i think the book is bad because i think it, it is a good book and i think it, it has some problems it is pretty restrictive with the way the cities work and um, there is a lot of potential there for interesting lists. But I think it's really an army that is best for people that uh, are starting fresh or are willing to invest a whole bunch of money into the army and they're not invested in any particular aesthetic or faction. So that's all I got for now, guys. I just wanted to kind of get some thoughts out there. Um, so I will talk to you all later.